This week, New South Wales lost the right to hold the Australian 500cc motorcycle Grand Prix. From 1997, the event will return to Phillip Island in Victoria. The Grand Prix and Sydney's Eastern Creek Raceway have been costly and controversial items for the New South Wales taxpayer. Along the way, there have been casualties, among them the Auto Cycle Union of Australia, which went bankrupt promoting the Grand Prix. Tim Sheridan tells the sad and bitter tale of how motorcycle racing's grassroots administrator sent its members' money down the tube. The general membership, I believe, are very, very sad that they've lost 70 years of tradition. And I think it's the strongest tradition in any form of motorsport in Australia. We've lost the the efforts and the work of thousands of people over 70 years which built up a, a very very good sport just because of the egos of you know, four or five people i, th I think it, it, re it really is sad and the general membership are, are fairly angry or, or, no they're more than fairly angry they're extremely angry about this until it went into liquidation earlier this year the Auto Cycle Union of New South Wales had for more than 70 years put countless thousands of backsides of all ages aboard racing motorcycles of all types. Its income was almost entirely licence, membership and entry fees from the 105 clubs under its administrative umbrella. Its costs were minimal, largely because 6,000 or so members gave their time for nothing to help run the meetings. Like a frugal grandmother, the ACU gently accumulated a bit over a million dollars during this lifetime. Then in three years, all that and a whole lot more went out the window. Because the ACU went from small time administrator to manager of the Australian Motorcycle Grand Prix. To its hard working members, the loss of all assets was like the flogging of the family jewellery. If you'd been a director at the time and you'd known the ACU's property was being mortgaged, everything they owned, would you have approved? No, definitely not. Under no circumstances, uh, particularly since uh, I'd found that uh, money had been going and going and going and the, the general manager of the time, Robert McMurtry, had been convincing the directors that, uh, that it'll be all right, this year we'll make money. The, the statement... ship's not sinking. Pardon? That the ship's not sinking. No, that's right, I was told many times the ship wasn't sinking, uh, we'll save it. The, uh, a statement was made to me and, uh, and the other directors that um, all businesses lose for the first couple of years. You've got to wait a few years for the, uh, for the business to start to make money. I couldn't see that. How long can you uh, lose $500,000 a year? For a long time, the Easter races at Mount Panorama were the focus of the ACU year. And under the union's low-cost framework, the risks at the mountain were more physical than financial. The demise of the regular Bathurst weekend left the ACU without a showpiece event, but in no trouble. Then in June 1991, Bob Barnard went broke promoting the Australian Grand Prix, which had been delivered to Eastern Creek on Sydney's outskirts by the Liberal New South Wales government. As guarantor for Barnard's loans, it then had to cough up $8 million in taxpayers' money to bail Barnard out. The government was looking for a new promoter, but no one was biting. Meanwhile, Auditor-General Tony Harris published his findings on Eastern Creek. Contractual conditions, he said, make the earning of a profit on Grand Prix events difficult. For example, the promoter was to have no part of the signage or catering income at Eastern Creek, only ticket sales and corporate boxes. Still under these conditions, the ACU took on a management contract with the New South Wales Government, though its job and responsibilities were essentially the promotion of the Australian Grand Prix. Even then, members were a little uneasy about the recent record of the ACU as a promoter and whether it could handle a major event. We promoted, much to my distaste, a, uh, a meeting called the 70th anniversary at Speedway at Newcastle, a total financial disaster. We promoted the Newcastle Trackmasters, which was also a massive financial disaster. We had no chance of uh, making any money with this administration. The only way I could see the reason for making money was to pay the massive wages bill that we had. On the 1992 race, the state government bore losses of one million and the ACU declared a surplus. 
Politically, this was very uncomfortable, so the contract was changed to reduce the risk of public money and the government put out tenders. The ACU defeated several other companies to grab the dud deal of the motor racing decade. Why did they become involved with the AGP when it smelt pretty badly of red ink anyway? Um, I, I think that they, the people involved, the, the few directors, not all of the directors, but the few of them, and a couple of people in the management thought they could make a name for themselves and uh, give their egos the biggest possible boost. They thought they could, they could do things that, which were fina financially impossible to do. In 1993, it lost $290,000. Last year, 600000 The ACU was now going under at the rate of $50,000 a month. Along the way, Robert McMurtry had become event director of the Grand Prix and moved the ACU out of the unit it owned and into larger premises nearby, costing the ACU $32,000 a year in rental. By coincidence, the building they left behind is adequate for CAMS which runs motorsport in New South Wales. By the middle of last year, Speedway champion John Langfield had successfully campaigned for a place on the board, hoping to find out a few things for himself and the members who were hearing rumours about financial trouble. I took it aside and explained the position uh, of the union, what the financial position was, but they stressed very strongly how important it was to not disclose to the other members what the amount uh, amounts of money involved were and how much we were in debt due to um, um, they suggested the possibilities of uh, litigation against uh, the directors for uh, disclosing things that may be of detriment to the company. As it turns out, uh, had we been able to disclose those things or not frightened to disclose them, um, the company may still well be in existence. The members would have jumped up and down and said, hey, we've got to stop this. So you smelt a rat? Oh yes, yeah, definitely. That was the reason to go in there as a director. Smell a rat very strongly. We approached several former directors of the ACU hoping for interviews and twice asked the former general manager Rob McMurtry to appear on Sports Sunday. All our offers were declined. But proof of the ACU board's reluctance to tell its members of its true financial position and that the state government knew about this is in a letter from Rob McMurtry to the New South Wales Minister of Sport, Chris Downey. In it, McMurtry writes of trying to hose down the desire of John Langfield and others to tell the members just how bad things were. To date, I have been able to quell this enthusiasm for disclosure by stressing the potential damage to the event profile, consumer confidence, and of course, the potential electoral damage to our partner, the New South Wales government. On the 16th of June last year, a business consultant hired by the ACU informed its board that the organisation was technically insolvent. Yet on the same day, mortgage papers were prepared by the Commonwealth Bank, under whose instruction it isn't clear. What is clear is the intention, because that night the board was asked to sign away the ACU's real estate against a $400,000 overdraft to be used at the discretion of the event director. There is no mention in the minutes we have of a mortgage. Indeed, two weeks earlier, the overdraft had been motioned, but the debt was only to be incurred against the world road racing accounts. But more than the loss of their property, the issue that really has members fuming is a bequest left to the ACU by a motorcycle racing enthusiast. Ian Cameron from Newcastle left the ACU more than $60,000 for the development of the sport in the northern region of New South Wales. As late as July last year, directors confirmed this money was to be used for no other purpose than that specified by the benefactor, but it's now gone. He gave 63 odd thousand dollars to the ACU to, be, to uh, promote the sport in, uh, in the Newcastle area. That's gone. That money's gone. A dead man's money's gone. I feel very sad. I blame the administration of the time for that. As the scramble for cash continued, the ACU's big bike found its way into the column of hockable assets. It was built for promotional use for around $40,000. Written into our books, it, uh, it claims that the value of the big bike is $100,000 and we may work but well sell it overseas for $100,000. Very, very unlikely. Langfield was right. When auctioned on March 20th by Pickles in Sydney, the monster bike didn't attract a bid and it's still for sale sitting in Pickles auction rooms.
There were now only two assets left. The first was 137,000 US dollars the ACU believed it was owed by a sponsor. But that went to the government for track hire fees and though the ACU argued as hard as it could afford to, it never saw the money. Then in November last year, the government finally sacked the ACU out of its job of running the Grand Prix. The relationship was over, the ACU a financial basket case. The only thing left of any value now was all the information the company had managed to file away on the running of this year's race. In December, the office manager of the ACU and acting chairman of the board, uh, uh, Robert Madden, uh, gave me a brief and asked me to present this brief to the New South Wales Police in reference to uh, a number of files which he believed had been taken from the ACU officers. So far, the results of any investigations by the police or the Fraud Enforcement Agency have not been made public. It's a fair argument that since the ACU members elected their directors, the members are partly responsible for the financial losses. But many believe the elected were led away from the ACU's real purpose and that it was an unnecessary casualty of Eastern Creek's hosting of the Australian Grand Prix. The object of the ACU is to promote motorcycling, not to promote egos. And what happened with the Australian Grand Prix was not the promotion of motorcycling, but the promotion of the egos of the people who are trying to...